It's good to see everybody here this morning, and that's actually the truth. That's what we want to talk about, is the truth. Of course, we all know what the truth means. The truth is what's true. It's what's verifiable. It's what the facts are. It's how things actually are. But unfortunately, we so often don't see the truth. And I want you to understand one thing, and one thing only out of this whole sermon. Jesus is truth. Not Jesus is the truth, but Jesus is truth. Let's take that from there. Truth. Well, let's define truth. I'll give you four ways to define the truth. Let's start with the first. Truth is what we see when the glory of the Father is revealed in the Son. 1 John, four, John 1, 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. To be full of truth is a sign of the Son. It is the sign of the Messiah, to be full of the truth. Notice, Jesus was the fulfillment of prophecy. He was the fulfillment, the completion of all of those promises that were made over generations of Hebrews. All of those promises showing when the Messiah came, when Jesus was here, showing the truth of what God had said, of what God had told His people. And in doing this, He proclaims the truth of the Father. John 18 says this in verse 37. And listen, this is kind of, you got to listen to this to catch it. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now, what does Pilate say immediately after that? Pilate said unto him, What is truth? Now, you see the distinction here, the very strong distinction. Jesus knows exactly what the truth is because He's come to bear witness to it. He also knows exactly what the truth is because those people that are following Him, they know the truth. That's why they're following Him. But Pilate, the consummate politician, the consummate ruler, the consummate governor, his answer is the same answer that the world always gives. Well, what is truth? Because Pilate, even though he knew and was going to declare that Jesus was an innocent man, that he could find no evil in him, he could find no wrong in him, Pilate was willing to sacrifice Jesus for, for political necessity, for political expediency. Pilate was willing to uh, have his own set of facts, his own truth placed over the truth that was Christ. And this isn't all that weird because the truth is not well liked by the world. It has been said a lie can travel halfway around the world before the truth has even put its boots on. And we know this is true. You can say something terrible, you can say something untruthful about someone, and everybody will remember that statement. It doesn't matter how many truthful things are said, we always keep in our mind that bit of negativity, that untruth, that's falsehood. It has a tendency to stick in our minds. And honestly, we have whole industries designed around the idea of shaping truth. We call it advertisement, don't we? Think about it. An advertisement in many ways lies to you. You see that beautiful car, that brand new vehicle, and they're driving along and they have these beautiful women draped around it, or they have this very successful fellow in there. And the idea is, is if you buy this car, you too can be successful and have beautiful women. Or if you're a woman, they'll do a car and they'll say, you too can be a successful woman and have this beautiful man. We see this in advertisement. We also have it in our spin doctors, the people that talk on our televisions that feed us this information. Only it's not really information, is it? It's slightly 
changed, it's slightly spun, it's, well, it doesn't really, it's not really what we say it is, or it's not really what we think it is, or it's not really how we heard it or what we thought, it's something entirely different. We know what the truth is, don't we? But it should be surprising to us that the world doesn't like the truth. The problem is not that the truth is somehow less powerful. It's not that the truth is somehow less quick. It's not that the truth is somehow unimportant. The problem is, is that most of us do not like the truth. We don't like to be told the truth. Think about the young child that you tell the truth to, or the teenager that you look at them and you say, look, young child of mine, teenager of mine, you're acting like a crazy person. Stop it. And the teenager looks at you. I have teenagers. This is exactly how they look at you. They look at you like you're crazy. But I've told them the truth. We don't want to hear the truth. We don't want someone to come to us and say, look, this problem that you have, this alcoholism that you have, the drugs that you have, this cigarette smoking that you're doing, this running around on your wife or this running around on your husband, these things in your life are causing trouble for you. You need to stop them. It's damaging. And we say, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. Who are you to tell me the truth? How dare you? We don't want to hear it. That shouldn't be surprising. Shouldn't surprise us at all. Why? Because the world loves the darkness. Read. John, in John 14, I'm sorry, in John 3, 19, and this is the judgment, the light has come into the world and the people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. And it shouldn't surprise us that the world loves the truth because the world, the world does not love the truth because the world does not like the light, it doesn't like the truth, and it hates the world hates Jesus. Understand this. John 15, 18. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. So it should be no surprise to us that the world does not like the truth. More than that, the world does not like the truth because the truth will set you free. Understand this. Most of the time when we are told lies, when we are told untruths, when people twist the truth, when people try to subtly control it or try to control the way we view things or sway us with falsehood, what they are trying to do is to enslave us. They're trying to control us. They're trying to maneuver us. They're trying to get us to buy this particular object. They're trying to get us to do this particular thing. They want to exert control over us. And they want us to willingly give that control over. But in John 8, 31 through 36, Jesus said this. So Jesus said to the Jews who believed on him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offsprings of Abraham, and we've never been enslaved to anyone. You see, right there, they're lying to themselves. Even as they were saying this, they were enslaved to the Romans. They had been enslaved to the Babylonians. Not... And they knew these things. This was part of their history. This is part of their culture. This is part of the traditions that they were taught. They remembered these things, but at this particular point, they say to themselves, we're enslaved to no one. But they missed the whole point of what Jesus was saying here. Notice. We are the offspring of Abraham who have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The sad reality is that most of us, most of the world prefers to be in slavery. That's the sad reality of it. Most of us prefer to live in slavery and not to live in the freedom of Christ. True freedom can only come through obedience to Christ. And I know that sounds 
a little bit like a contradiction. You're saying to me, well, isn't to, to be obedient to someone, isn't that to be? No. Because when I'm obedient to Christ, I have been freed of darkness. I have been freed of ignorance. I have been freed of superstition. I have been freed of sin. And the truth shines through my light like a bright searchlight. Burning all of that away. And I see the truth. I see the truth as it is. I see the world as it is. Because I know that Jesus is truth. In our reading, it says, John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one cometh to the Father except through me. So if you want to find the way, what must you do? You've got to go through Jesus. If you want to live, what must you do? You've got to go through Jesus. If you want truth, you've got to go through Jesus. It's that simple. And if we are to be disciples of Christ, we must do the truth ourselves. We must practice the truth. John 3.21 But whosoever do, does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. If you would follow Christ, you must do the truth. Because in that way, you then emulate the Son. And in emulating the Son and being like Christ, who, as we know, when he was the truth, what does it show? It shows forth the glory of God. And when we practice the truth, that's exactly what we do. We show God's glory in our lives and in our actions. This morning, understand that if you would know the truth, it can only be found through Christ.